Hey, Mike, this is Luis. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Luis. Good to see you. Man, it is, uh, we're five hours a week away from each other, and this, this, uh, these platforms of doing online stuff is great. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for, for talking with me today. I, I have a, a, a whole list of questions to ask you. And uh, mainly what I want to do on this is focus on under 65 ACA Obamacare. And uh, there's people out there that are thinking about getting into business. There's people that are in the insurance business but are not offering this product. And so these are some commonly asked questions that I get. So, um, Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, you're the owner of the brokerage, the CEO of the brokerage. Tell us what you guys do and, and uh, a history of your, your insurance experience. Sure. Okay. Well, I got into business in 1993 and I really didn't know much about insurance, but I married into the family and my father-in-law owned the brokerage and basically told me that if I was going to be able to afford his daughter, I should probably consider getting into the insurance business. <laughs> so I thought maybe he's right about that. And so I did. I transitioned out of the restaurant business, got into the insurance business, and I've seen a lot of changes. Um, the first couple of years, you know, we had some legislative changes in Texas. It really scared me. Uh, things that took us out of certain markets and taught me some early lessons about how important it is to stay involved legislatively. And then as I progressed through my career, I saw a couple of other, you know, opportunities uh, that some good, some bad, uh, where one door closed, another window had opened. So early 2000, we decided we wanted to really be heavy into the Medicare business. We would all, we were already writing a ton of health insurance. We wanted to diversify, knowing that some of these people we wrote at age 45 would turn 65 one day. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So uh, I took over as the president of the company in 2007. And here we are, you know, a 27 year career later, and things are exciting and you know the energy is still there and we're looking forward to further growth over the next several years. And, and I think we're hitting kind of a, a great storm that we're, we're getting into with, you started with regular healthcare, um, full underwriting mm -hmm. um, to where we transitioned uh, seven or eight years ago into what is now known as Obamacare, mm -hmm. the, the Affordable Care Act. Um, and, and that's been, what I saw is a lot of agents said, I'm not going to deal with it. I'm out. And then for the ones that decided, you know what, I'm going to evolve and offer this mm -hmm. it has been incredible for us. Um, oh yeah. You, you, you brought it on to us as agents and uh, um, we're, we're able to sell this product. Tell us a little bit about ACA Obamacare, where it is now and where you think it's going to head in the future. Sure. Well, you're right. A couple of years back when I first met with you and told you that you probably got to get into this business, you saw it. You, you understood the demographics and the opportunity and you jumped on it. And I would tell any agent that is not doing ACA business right now that they should do the same thing because, you know, four or five years ago when you decided to get in, I didn't know how much longer the business was going to last. I, I had originally thought maybe we would get about 50 you know, five years out of the business and then it would be taken over by the government somehow. But no, it, it has lasted much longer than that. And as I look over the next five years, I see that there's even more opportunity. Uh, we've learned a lot of lessons. We've seen some big carriers exit the market, Humana, United Healthcare, Cigna, just to name a few. But now I see those companies looking back over the fence and saying, hey, maybe it's time to get back in. And we're starting to see that. We, we found out just this last week that United has filed products in Maryland. And we understand that they're, that's not all they're going to do. They're, they're going to continue to do that. They're going to come into other states. So I'm very encouraged by what I'm seeing. And then now, now with the COVID crisis, you know, things that are going on with unemployment, a lot of employers that are cutting out their employee benefits, we see that there's going to be even more opportunity in the under age 65 individual major medical market because a lot of these people that are currently covered through their group plan and are being either laid off, furloughed, or employers are canceling their plans, we see that there's a huge uptick in activity right now and that that's going to continue. So new carriers coming back to the market. Uh, we already have the highest number of uninsured people in the United States here in Texas. And now that employers are getting rid of their plans, we see that there's even more opportunity. So for agents that are not in the ACA business, Right now would be a perfect time to get ready for the next enrollment period. You know, with what you just said, and I did have a list of questions. You know, we answered three to four questions there, which is a good thing. 
So for agents that are out there listening to this, ACA Obamacare has an enrollment season. Okay, it starts November the 1st and it closes December the 15th. If you're not enrolling people during that time frame, most people are stuck. They cannot get into a plan. Now, you mentioned their employers are uh, 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 getting rid of their benefits. You know, employees are being furloughed. They're being let go and they're losing their benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, this is this creates an opportunity, you know, a special election that allows you to get in outside the normal enrollment period. So, you know, in one sense, this is a good thing for agents. Yes, it is. When people lose their other creditable coverage and that's what's happening, we expect that there's going to be a lot of people that are either going to be uninsured or perhaps try to get into Medicaid. And then there's going to be a lot of people that just won't qualify for Medicaid and they're going to start looking around. And I would tell them, seek out the advice of a professional agent, because not only is there ACA type plans out there or Obamacare, there are also short term major medical plans. So there are a lot of opportunities. And if an agent is on the sideline about what they want to do, it's time to get involved. And I would tell you, and, and, you know, for agents that think, well, there's no money in this and just stay tuned towards the end of this, uh, the end of this interview, we're going to talk about the, the potential money. And there is some real money involved. Um, the one thing I tell agents about and insurance that ask me, hey, um, you know, I need to get a plan. I've got these pre-existing conditions. I'm like, I don't need to know if, if you have credible coverage and we have a way to get you in because you're losing that credible coverage. Pre-existing conditions are covered. That's right. You know, it is now they may not be covered on a short term plan, but they'll definitely be covered under an ACA Obamacare type of plan. Yes. Guaranteed so, issue. Guaranteed issue. And, uh, you know, super easy to do for us agents. Now, um, you know, why help the insureds out? Uh, you know, Mike, as an agent and even agents that I train, navigating healthcare.gov is not the easiest thing to do. And, and that's us as, as insurance professionals. Now imagine an, uh, uh, a regular person, you know, a non-insurance person going through healthcare.gov and trying to not only enter all the information, but then select the plans. Right. You know, not only do we have multiple plans from multiple carriers, we have different levels of plans. We have mm -hmm. bronze, silver, uh, uh, the gold plans, different deductibles. Um, there's a lot of options out there. It's a little confusing. Yes, it can be. And, you know, with an agent getting certified at the healthcare.gov website, and they, they have a good working knowledge of that, uh, that's a good start. But there are other software packages put out in the private marketplace that are better and easier to use than healthcare.gov. So for an agent to, you know, just start cold turkey and not know anything about the ACA, we could get them up and running in less than a day. They could be out right in business over the next couple of months and they could make thousands of dollars by the end of the year. Don't don't give away the thunder, Mike. That's at the very <laughs> end. <right? laughs> we, we'll come back and give some more thunder. There you go. There you go. So as far as an agent getting started, so uh, kind of walk us through the process. You know, age, agents hearing this are like, you know what? I, I want to dive into this opportunity. Um, can, can you go over that? Sure. Basically, you're going to have kind of a three step process. One is you're going to need to pick the companies that you'd like to be appointed with. And then the second part of that would be you'll need to go and complete the actual certification that would allow for you to write a qualified health plan and for a person to receive subsidized premiums. Uh, an agent would have to have a certain type of certification, which is not very difficult to do. And then the third thing, the carriers may have small training programs, online computer based training. And once you've gone through the appointment process and the certification process, then you're ready to go. Uh, as you mentioned a minute ago, most of the products are easy to quote and enroll. Everything is done online. We very seldom, if ever, see a paper application. So agents could write this business anywhere they're able to do business. You know, if they have the licenses outside of Texas or if they just want to write business, they may live in San Antonio, but they want to write business in El Paso, for example. That's no problem. Uh, they can call up some type of a video service like what we're using here and they could actually enroll them online and have that policy issued right now uh, within a couple of hours. 
and be able to use that policy the, as early as the first day of the next month. So it's very easy to get started. And I, I think a, agents that are on the sidelines uh, need to erase any doubt in their mind that this may be too difficult because it's really not. It's not. You know, the, the one thing that I see agents do, you know, well, let's go back to the process. You know, number one, yes, we pick the carriers that are the that are in your county because the, these are these are specific to county. Uh, we get your appointment paperwork with those carriers. And then the certification, I think it takes an hour mm -hmm. uh, at the most. And I will tell you, you have Belinda in your office. God, I love her. She mm -hmm. is uh, a great resource and help. She's even creating a manual for us. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got it where it walks you through the certification process. So that's an awesome thing to have. Also, the one thing I like, you know, you're thinking, okay, great. I want to do this, but I know nothing about health insurance. Well, Belinda's got a course that she's putting together and we're going to expand on it and do an eight week, one hour course that if you're an agent contracted with us, we're going to give you from not knowing to think about healthcare, you know, healthcare 101 all the way to week eight. I'm doing an eight week course where in week eight, we're going to talk about marketing. How do you get your, you know, if you make the decision to jump in, okay, now the hardest part, how are you going to get customers? So we are going to do an eight week program. I'm going to expand a little bit on what Belinda's doing, but we do have the resources to take an agent from, I don't know anything about healthcare to, Hey, I'm, I'm fully capable of, of recommending plants. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're putting together. So the one issue that I see with agents is, is, you know, they, they, they get contracted, they're ready to roll, but they want to know everything about healthcare analysis by paralysis. Mm -hmm. Paralysis by analysis, however that's it. But you know what? They 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 want to know everything before they start offering these plans. And the good thing is, is that we've got resources. Uh, agents that contract through us will have access to myself, and I've been doing this since '99. Um, and then Belinda, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my agents that I that I kind of you think sometimes bypass me, and they go straight to Belinda. Uh -huh. she, she's a great resource. Yes, and, she is. And not so, only that, but you also have company reps. Carriers will provide resources to help train and support with marketing. So agents have a ton of resources. Yes, you're right. Yeah. And we do have a platform that is free to our agents where you can do your enrollments and not have to go and navigate healthcare.gov. It is That's a right. great resource. I've used it for years. Uh, it was a little scary because you had to take a leap of faith and issue the policies and then hope that all your information was in there so that you could get paid the following year. But I've done it and I haven't had any issues with it. And uh, so it is a great platform that is free to our agents. Yes, free. That's and right. So, so that, that's a good thing. Um, so we've got to give an agent an idea of what they need to do to get started. Um, what do you see as far as agent mistakes? You, you know, you, you work with thousands of agents under your, under your company. Do, do you see some mistakes or, or maybe not even mistakes, but things that, that, they, that they're not doing? And then, and then more importantly, what do you see out there that agents are doing that is making them marketing wise, uh, uh, you know, however they're conducting their business, that is taking them to the next level in production? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer I'm going to give you is the positive and the negative. And okay. let's start with the wrong thing to do. Most agents don't have a marketing plan. They just decide on they're going to get in the insurance business. And after they go write their mom and their aunt and their cousins, then they're out of prospects. And so one of the first mistakes that I see agents, new agents make, is that they don't have a business plan. Maybe they don't know how to build a business plan. And that would be another reason to connect with someone like you, because you do have a plan and you could help them to construct that plan with realistic goals, which is the second thing I see agents doing wrong. They don't have goals. They don't know where they're trying to go. They don't have a blueprint. Now, that's what agents are doing wrong. Now, to the other part of your question, what are the agents doing right? The ones that are doing it right do have a business plan. They know where they want to go. They have goals. They're motivated. They have a, a plan, whether that's to use your eight-step program that you mentioned a minute ago, or if they're trying to just uh, say they're a property and casualty agent and they're not in the ACA or health insurance world, they've got a stack full of property and casualty files. And all they have to do is just make sure that people know that they offer health insurance 
And many of those people are more interested in doing business with one agent as opposed to finding another agent. They would prefer to do business with who they're already doing business with. So I think the second part of your question, what is it that you would say do to do? I'd say get a business plan and then execute on the plan. There's a saying about plan the work and work the plan. And where I sit, we do work with a lot of agents. And I can tell you that there's a lot of agents that will come to me with a plan and I can tell that they're not serious about it. And then there are those like you who, when I walk away, think, OK, he's probably going to really execute on that plan. And those are the people that we identify and try to take to the next level. So happy to help out however we can. So agents, you know, it may sound like, OK, I've never done a marketing plan or maybe it's somebody who's never been in the insurance business and uh, and they're thinking, well, how do I create a marketing plan? You know, I, I came, I spent eight years in the military. Then I was a teacher. And so I never had, I had an education degree, had no insurance, no marketing background, no insurance background. I'm winging it. Okay. Uh, and if you're in that position and you're thinking, okay, how am I going to come up with a plan? That's where I step in. Mm -hmm. I've got 99, I think it's almost 20 plus years of experience. I do have a property and casualty agency here in San Antonio. We can help you create a plan. It's not that hard. And you've got to remember Obamacare, ACA, the enrollment season is at the end of the year. It's a 45 day hustle. And what I tell you, know, I've got a wife and I've got three kids, Mike. And I tell them, I'm not gonna be a father and I'm not gonna be a husband for these 45 days. So you need to count me out of the picture. I'm out. This is, I gotta make a whole, I gotta do a whole year's work in those 45 days. Mm -hmm. And in those 45 days, we, we are, talking to customers we're, we we've already lined up so many customers that all we're trying to do is is get them set up and i will tell you me and my staff and i have two people that help me out during this time out of my nine those two people we stay here 12 1 2 o'clock at night finishing enrollments mm -hmm. because we are busy writing and writing and helping agents so it's a 45 day hustle but how do you get enough prospects well that's where i'm going to come in okay um, there's a lot of guys in my position that have a PNC agency that don't want to do healthcare, but guess what? You can partner up with them. Mm -hmm. I know the lingo. I know what you can tell, talk to, you know, I know how to get to them. And right. so that's what I can help you with. Um, you know, if you're a property and casualty agent, you're like, you know what? I want a piece of this pie. Okay. I can show you how to market to your existing book. And literally all you got to do is work your book. Uh, mm -hmm. if you're not in the property casualty business, you're, you're maybe a, a life only agent or a Medicare agent. And you're thinking, you know what? I also want to dabble into this ACA. I can show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. it, it is not that hard. And, uh, you know, remember, you know, I tell agents, there's only a couple of carriers in every county. It's not like you're dealing with 10 carriers. Um, and this software platform that we have is uh, really helps out. It narrows down the field and it makes it incredibly easy to do a presentation. Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll go with that. So, uh, so if an agent first, let's just say it's a first year agent. Um, you you said you know, build the plan or make a plan and work the plan. Other than that, any other advice for somebody who's on the fence or somebody who 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 is is maybe already in it but didn't do anything out of the ordinary? They wrote a couple of policies and said that was it. Any advice for those guys on on wanting to get a jump start for next year? Don't wait. That would be my easiest, quickest answer. If you're sitting around thinking about it, you're wasting time. Quit thinking about it and do it. It's not that difficult. There's a lot of people out there, especially in Texas, that need help. So getting leads, not difficult. And then getting referrals, be sure to ask for those. And before you know it, an agent could be you know, helping two, three, four people a day. And that leads to more and that momentum grows. So don't wait. That's, what, that's my advice. That's the biggest thing. And I'll tell you, it's, it's like it is a snowball. You know, you start helping, you help one person. They're like, hey, can you help my sister? Can you help my brother? Can you help my friend? And it just snowballs on you, yep. and, which is a good problem to have. Absolutely. All right. So we're kind of getting to the end of this, Mike. And uh, we talked about the opportunity. We talked about what an agent needs to do if they want to get into this. And uh, the final question, and hopefully we got people hanging on to this, is what kind of money can they make by doing this? So I, I take a different approach. I tell my colleagues, if they don't want to get into the business, I'll tell them there's no money in ACA. 
man, just refer it to me and I'll write it. <laughs> you know, hey, we'll go have some beers. We'll go to the bar. There's no money in ACA. I'm going to do you a favor, Mr. PNC agent. Yeah. In reality, there is some great money. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I like what you just said. People need help. Okay. They're going to go somewhere and get it. You might as well be a resource for those people. Mm -hmm. But financially, let's have it. Okay. Well, you know, in general, your early agent or, you know, ones that are just getting started, they're going to end up making about, say, $20 per person per month. In some cases, the other companies may pay a percentage, like 3% of the total premium, and it could get higher than that with production. So just in general, think in terms of one person may represent about $300. So if you have a family of four, times 300, you may make about $1,200 on that family. If you're writing three or four families a week, then you're making three or $4,000 a week. And if you keep doing that for 50 weeks out of the year, it can add up pretty, pretty substantially. So I would say, you know, a first year agent could make 40 to $50,000 if they just gave it a decent effort. But if they really wanted to hustle and put together a business plan and plug into some of the training programs that you offer through your agency, you know, 50,000 to 75,000 or even six figure incomes are possible during the first year. I agree with you. You know, I'm going to use an example of a teacher, you know, first year teacher, I think here in San Antonio, it's somewhere in the 50,000 range. Mm -hmm. You know, they're working nine months out of the year. They put long hours in. I, mean, I was a teacher for seven years. Um, you know, the summers are kind of off. You know, I used to teach in the summers and, and make that little extra money. Um, so 50,000, let's just go with that number. I tell agents, if you enroll mom, dad, two kids, that is very close to a thousand dollar commission. You know, just use it as an average. And if you write 50 of those in those 45 days, you've made what a teacher makes annually. Mm -hmm. now, 45 days, 50, uh, 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 a nap a day. Um, I can say, I mean, we're, we're me and my agency, uh, we do 10 to about 15, 20 of those a day. It's very, very doable. It's, it's all on, on the marketing you're going to do and how much, how many prospects you're going to bring in. But mm -hmm. you start thinking about it. If I write a household of four, I'm making a thousand. I need to sell 50 of those in those 45 days. I need to do one a day, approximately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not that hard no. to, make, to make a good living. You do two a day, you're already at a hundred thousand. Yep. You know, and still that's 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 minimal. Yes. So the money is real. Now we just talked about the health product. There's ancillary products that these people need too. Oh yeah. You know, they're, they're, when they leave job, when they get let go from their 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 their, their, their uh, employer, they're losing a package. They're losing potentially life insurance. Mm -hmm. They're in their dental and vision package, mm -hmm. uh, maybe disability. Anything else I'm missing? Some of them even have a 401k and they may, do, may need to do a rollover. Uh, you know, basically health insurance is a door opener. And once you've established that relationship, depending on the type of license you may hold, you could write a lot of other products that you just named. Plus your property and casualty agents may also pick up things like additional homeowners or automobile policies. So the possibilities to cross sell are endless and health insurance is a great door opener. Now I'm going to give away a little secret and I shouldn't, but I'm going to mm -hmm. PNC guys. If you're like, I, I want to write more PNC. I have, I have a trick that I do. Okay. So I have a big sign that I put out in my office, Obamacare enrollment center. Sometimes my lobby will get full of people. Um, but when I have the time, I will quote somebody. So Mike, let's just say you're my client. I'll get in there and I can run a quote in pretty much, get it all done in less than 10 minutes. Assuming I have your info, your wife's info and your kids and we're set up, but I'm going to play a little dumb. Mike, God, I had a problem, man. Uh, it's going to take me about 10 minutes to resolve this. Can you go over there and sit with my girl, Laura? And uh, she's going to uh, uh, help you out with some other stuff while I get this crap thing that happened on my computer fixed. <laughs> Okay, so you go to Laura. What Laura's going to do is like, oh, okay, well, while we're waiting for Luis to get his, his act together, I'm going to go ahead and run you an auto and a home quote. What can they say? They're sitting there waiting anyway. While they're sitting there, I'm doing. she's doing the auto and home. My life guy is coming in to introduce himself. Hey, yep. Mike, you know, my name is Jose. I do the life insurance uh, for the agency. Who do you have life with? 
Usually what we get, I don't have life insurance. It's right. Like, are you kidding me? You know, that's more important than the health and auto stuff that you're doing here with uh, Luis and Laura. You know, I'm going to get you a quote. You know, I already have the info. And guess what? I have all your data, Mike. I have your date of birth. Yeah. I have all your sensitive info. Well, I send it to my licensed agents. I'll say he doesn't even have, he just walks back to his desk and he's running the quote. Yeah. He's smart. He's already got that quote ready so that when he sits with you and he says, Mike, you know what? I ran you a 10 year term. You know, you know this is, I'm just going to throw a number out there. You know, it's $250,000 of insurance and here's your rate. Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think? And it, and it's, it's all done in house. Yep. You know, I'm seeing customers want to deal with one entity. They don't want to have one agent for their auto, one for their home, one for their health, one for their dental and vision and so forth. And right. so, so you can really maximize that one customer. Yes, uh, you're right. Good so you. I, it's a door opener. It is a, you know, it's a great door opener and you're going to make some monies for opening that door where you're at it. Some great. Well, that, that's why you're successful at what you do. What you just said is so common sense. But very few people do that. So going back to the earlier question, what mistakes do people make? They don't do a fact finder. They don't ask for those other lines of coverage. And they're sitting right in front of another prospect who may need life insurance. Most people think life insurance costs two to three times more than it actually costs. So kudos to you, Luis. That's exactly what you should be doing. So thank you, man. I appreciate that. Now, you mentioned this technology tool that we're using right now. You never heard of it. It's called StreamYard. I love it. Um, the uh there's zoom there's different platforms that agents can use whatever they mm -hmm. want to use you, you know people with 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 aca or obamacare you can do all of your work remotely yes you've got that ability it is incredible um you can email them the summary of benefits it explains the plans um we're even now creating a uh, an electronic intake form yeah, I take all my customers' information, and sometimes I'll mail them an Excel, and they'll fill it out. But uh, I've discovered now I can send them a form electronically mm -hmm. that that I can text to you, I can email to you, uh, I can give you my iPad, and you can fill it out. And it's, you're going to fill out all your information electronically. And when you sign, because it's got a signature block, and you hit submit, all that data is already imported into my Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. so I already know. Yeah. I got you. If, if I don't get you this year, well, guess what? I'm going to market to you next year. There you go. Uh, if I do get you this year, but we, you decided at this time, you know, it wasn't a good time for, for you to do your auto insurance and your home insurance or your life insurance. Well, guess what? I'm going to put you into my CRM that we use. Mm -hmm. We're going to market you throughout the entire year. There you go. Okay. So we, we're, we're, we've created that form and we're loving it. Um, oh. That's what, what you should be doing. That's what you call working smarter, not harder. I know. You found a way to streamline it. And to go back to what you said a couple of times, that, that 45 days during the enrollment period is intense. And you've got to have a good, solid business plan to expedite your actions. You can't be spending a bunch of time behind a windshield, driving all over the place, stuck in traffic. Having people come to your agency, that's one way to solve that. Going online and bringing that information to your agency is another way. So again, that's a, a great business practice. I would encourage everyone to, to adopt something like that strategy. Yeah, and, and and to add to that one, you know, uh, my parents, you know, they're in their seventies, and guess what? We zoom at eight thirty every night. Hmm. So if you think people are afraid of technology, you mm -hmm. know, what, what we just went through and are, and are going through right now, people are comfortable with Zoom in these yes. online platforms. Yes. You know, you know, is it going to change how we do business in the future? I think so. Probably. It, it, I think it's going to, you know, people are not going to want to visit uh, in person anymore. And so now we've got the ability with these kind of tools to share the information with them and yep. become more proficient, a little more uh, expedient and get more policies in. Mm -hmm. yep. So so I, I see it as an ex ex exciting time. Um, guys, again, you know, my name is Luis Moreno. There's my information at the bottom. OK, I am a, a local agent here in Texas, in San Antonio. Uh, I've got my email and my phone number there. That's my personal cell. Call me uh, when you get uh, contracted through me. You now get associated with the brokerage. And we we got this. Well, I, I love this because how many I, I have no other CEO that I can call and have a conversation with. <laughs> you know, so this is, you know, I'm the CEO of my business. You know, great. But, you know, I, you, you, you got a huge company, great people. 
and mm -hmm. and you get associated with the brokerage um and and you guys host yearly meetings uh, all over mm -hmm. texas where, where you do kickoff meetings with with plans and carriers and uh and uh you know, so so you get access to all that by joining our team. Mm -hmm. uh, any final words, Mike? You know, a simple way to put a ribbon around this is we don't get what we get unless we get other people what they need. So by helping others grow their business, we're able to grow our business. We cannot grow unless we help others grow. That's our simple philosophy. And that's why we do what we do. We enjoy doing what we do. We're good at what we do. And watching people develop a new line of income, it's very exciting. It's what motivates me. It's fun. I, think I, I enjoy it. And, and one of the, the commitments that I make to the agents that I'm working with, you know, I, I am wanting to be that lifeline, that phone a trainer. Uh, oh, I'm in the middle of an appointment. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So as I've increased my staff. I'm able to help agents when they're stuck. So it's just not a matter of, hey, I'm going to give you a contract and good luck. Now, I, I've done that in the past, um, but you know we're we're evolving and we're really wanting to hold your hand through the process. And it's not a lot of hand holding. You know you, the learning curve is steep. You know there's a few things you got to overcome, and and eventually, you, you know, pretty quickly you can get enough knowledge where you are very competent to recommend plants to these insurers. Yes. And and then you know and then we got Belinda. You know, I still call Belinda. Hey, Belinda, I, you know, what about this? And so she's a great resource. She's 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 great, and she's part of your team. And uh, we need a couple more of her, Mike. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the chance to share some thoughts, and uh, I just encourage you personally to keep doing what you're doing. And you're a great example for others to follow. Thank you, Mike. And uh, well, have have a good day. Thank you for taking a little time out of your schedule. And guys, don't forget, contact me, and we'll get you set up. You know, we're in June enrollment season. Or, or almost going to be in June, but enrollment season starts in November. You don't want to get contracted and, and try to get ready in November. You want to get started now. Um, yeah. We've got this eight week program. You, you know, it, it's going it, to, by the time you get done, you're going to have a plan where you can start marketing in August, in September, and start getting leads in and getting these people ready. When the door opens in November, they're going to be your first ones to call. And they're going to be there waiting for you. So we're, we're going to get to that at the eighth portion of the class. Yep. So uh, again, guys, you know, Luis Moreno, I got Mike Smith here, CEO of the brokerage. And uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Thank you.